Uh, welcome to this tutorial, uh, which is about empirical formula. So in this, uh, we're learning to calculate the simplest ratio of atoms in a compound, and that is the empirical formula. So for example, BACL2, 1 to 2 ratio, or CH2, a 1 to 2 ratio of the carbon to hydrogen there. Now we're going to do this first of all using the actual mass, then using percentage mass. Then after that, work out molecular formula using the relative formula mass. That would be like going from the empirical formula with MR of 30 here, for example, up to the molecular formula uh, where you're using the relative formula mass, uh, in this case of 180. OK, so uh, what's the problem? Uh, we can imagine that uh, we've done an experiment and uh, 30 grams of magnesium reacted with 20 grams of oxygen. Trying to work out the formula, and you might go that the ratio of magnesium to oxygen is 3 to 2 because of the 30 to 20. Well, that's correct by mass, but it's not correct in terms of the number of atoms, and that's because the magnesium and oxygen atoms have different masses. So an analogy here might be to think about uh, I've got uh, some snooker balls which are heavy, I've got some ping pong balls which are light, and I've got a mass of 500 grams of the snooker balls and 80 grams of the ping pong balls. So in terms of mass, I've got a greater amount of snooker balls than ping pong balls. But in terms of the number of uh, balls present, I need to take into account the mass of each ball. So we could say that for snooker balls, that's 100 grams per ball, but uh, ping pong balls much lighter, 4 grams this is equivalent to the uh, to the MR, the uh, relative atomic mass of, of, of atoms, uh, the mass of each atom. In this case, we're talking about mass of each ball. So we would say in this case, you would have uh, five snooker balls here because you've got 80 grams of ping pong balls, which are four grams each. That will be 20 balls, which gives a ratio of one to four, which is obviously a different way around in terms of the mass. So if we go back to the magnesium oxide, we had 30 grams of the magnesium 20 grams of the oxygen, taking into account the uh, relative masses of these of 24 and 16, we can work out the amount in mole by taking the mass, dividing it by the relative mass, do that in both cases, and in both cases we come out of 1.25. So in terms of atoms, the ratio is 1 to 1, and therefore we'd say the empirical formula of uh, this compound is uh, MgO. Uh, here's the second example. It says a compound contained 4.6 grams of sodium, 2.8 of nitrogen, 9.6 of oxygen. Find the empirical formula. And here you're given the MR values or the relative atomic masses. So putting this in a table, there are the masses that you're given. We're going to work out the amount in mole by taking the mass divided by the relative atomic mass or the MR. And that comes out as 0.2 for sodium, 0.2 for nitrogen and 0.6 for oxygen. So we would say this is in a ratio of 1 to 1 to 3. Give the empirical formula of NaNO3. Right, you can do the same using a percentage mass. So find the empirical formula of a compound containing 85.7% carbon, 14.3% hydrogen by mass. So the percentage mass you can apply to any amount. So you can just choose that we had a total of 100 grams, which would suggest that you had 85.7 grams of carbon, 14.3 grams of hydrogen. We can just use exactly the same numbers here. Divide by the MR values or the RAM values. That will give you our ratio in terms of amount now, which uh, in simplest form is a 1 to 2. So our empirical formula would be CH2. OK, so that's it for uh, empirical formula. For molecular formula, then you're thinking what the actual molecule is involved. And this would be only for covalently bonded compounds. So a question would be that the, the comes to mind is whether you could have a molecule of CH2. And thinking about the bonding, then we might have a pair of bonds, electrons there to make a bond, a pair of electrons here to make a bond, but then you'd have to either have unpaired uh, electrons or you'd have to have pair one, but then still be short of uh, two electrons in that outer shell. So it doesn't look like a likely compound that you could have, but you could have C2H4 or C3H6. There's the structures drawn there. They're still in the ratio one to two for the carbon to hydrogen, uh, but carbon's making four bonds, hydrogen's making one bond. Everything looks nice there. So to convert the empirical formula into molecular formula, we're going, we're going to need the relative formula mass, the MR value of the unknown compound. So from that previous example, if that came in as being 56, we knew that our empirical formula just for the CH2 unit was 14. So we'd need to think how many multiples of 14 are in 56. Uh, and 56 divided by 14 is 4. So you would need four of these CH2 units to make up to the complete MR value of 56. So we'd say the molecular formula here is C4H8, uh, which is uh, fine. That would be butene. 
OK, and here's a final example. Uh, converting empirical formula to molecular formula. What is the empirical and molecular formula of a compound which has 40% carbon, 6.7% hydrogen, 53.3% oxygen by mass, and a relative formula mass of 180? So there are the amounts by mass. Convert them into mole by dividing by the relative masses of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And we end up with a ratio of 1 to 2 to 1. So empirical formula is CH2O. That unit has a MR value of 30, but we'd need six of those units to make it up to the 180, which we know is the relative formula mass of the whole compound. So therefore, the molecular formula here would be C6H12O6. OK, thanks for watching.